okay so in time series stationarity is is very common that means you need stationary data uh, for forecasting okay uh, but many times most of the real world data is non stationary in nature and non stationarity can bring problems and that has to be uh, very well dealt with okay so you need to make non stationary series stationary to be able to use that for forecasting the of a stationarity is that you should have a constant mean and and a constant uh, variance so that will loosely what we say that what we mean by stationarity in time series data so uh, so the two important things are mean of the station uh, mean of the time series and the other one is the uh, variance right so we are concerned about the mean and variance of the time series when uh, trying to understand whether the CD is stationary or not. So the so mean and variance uh, have to be constant for a time series to be called as a stationary time series. Okay. Sometimes the mean could be non-constant. So the first case of non-stationary could come from the mean being non-constant. As you can see in the particular you know time series graph, you can see the mean is not constant in nature. It is increasing. Right? It is an increasing trend, so the mean is increasing uh, with time, and that's a typical case of non-stationary time series. Sometimes the non-stationarity could come from uh, for, by uh, by uh, it could be through variance as well. So we could have a non-constant variance, and that could also be the reason for non-stationary. And sometimes it, you know, there could be both both non-constant mean and non-constant variance. So here is a typical example so the second example is a case where you know it's a constant mean you can see the mean is very much constant but you know the variance is actually you know variance is actually in increasing over time right so that's a typical case of non stationarity due to uh, non constant invariance okay so in this particular session we will only be concerned about the non stationarity in mean Okay, so we are not concerned about non-stationarity non in variance because that's where the focus is for this particular session and unit root is something that we can relate to uh, a time series data where we have non-stationarity in mean. There are two aspects to non-stationarity in mean. In one case, you will have a deterministic trend and we'll talk about what deterministic trend is and the other one is where you have a stochastic trend. Okay. So deterministic as you understand from the word itself, something that we can easily determine, okay? So without having to uh, go through uh, more of a, uh, you know, uncertainty, okay? Whereas in stochastic strain, you have, uh, you have not uncertainty, okay? So that's more difficult. So deterministic strain is somewhat easier to understand and sort of uh, handle and stochastic strain, on the other hand, is somewhat more difficult because it's uncertain. So let's see what deterministic trend is. So a deterministic trend is when we say that the series is trending because it is an explicit function of time. So that's the definition of a deterministic trend. And here's this example, simple to understand. You, um, the time series yt is just a function of the time. Okay. So yt is just a function of time and nothing else. Okay. It's just constant. I mean, alpha is just constant. AT is this error term. Sometimes you know we use at epsilon t. I've just used at AT. Okay. Um, and beta is the slope parameter. Okay. So the only variable here in this equation is t. So yt, the time series, is a function of time. So it all depends only on the time. So if you increase the time, the value of the time series will go up. So time is not t, is a certain variable, like a deterministic variable deterministic or something that is uh, known to us right so it's not uncertain so to say okay so that's the reason why we call this as a deterministic trend that means that there is a trend it's an upward trend and it is very well known to us because we know what time is and if you know time you can very well calculate or find out what the value of yt is all right so we'll just try to you know modify this equation or refresh this equation in a certain way beta t plus a t and then y t minus 1 equal to beta t minus 1 plus a t 
and then you subtract okay this is equation 1 this is equation 2 so that means it is uh, the time series equation for time t and this is time series equation for time t minus 1 and if you subtract uh, uh, you know second from the first you'll get an interesting pattern so uh, negative right okay so here it will be negative this will be positive so t and t will get cancel and what we have is just a beta okay that's exactly what we have done here okay so what you have done here is that this is delta t delta y t which is the difference between y t minus y t minus 1 okay and you know this is nothing but beta and you have a t and a t minus 1 okay and when you take an expectation expectation of error term so expectation of expectation is nothing but the mean and mean of the error term as you know is just the zero the error term is a white noise series and you take the mean of that it, it is always going to be uh, zero okay so that pack gets cancelled when you take expectations so expectation of the change in yt is nothing but your beta and that's the important thing so in a deterministic trend you take the mean value of, of the change in your time series you end up uh, getting what is known as the slope coefficients so in such a case your slope coefficients is nothing but the difference between the values of the time series for a consecutive time period okay and that's the reason why this type of model is known as trained stationary time series model okay that means it's non stationary but with train so you can if you handle the trained uh, you know you can you can be very well forecast the series without any issue okay so here is this example i mean we have just you know simulated some data for it and you can see it is increasing over time with slight variation and this variation is only because of the error term at okay and from deterministic trend so we'll understand how stochastic trend is um, is in fact different from a deterministic trend and how this can be handled differently than the deterministic uh, trend so we'll uh, start with an ar type model so we have yt which is a uh, which is just equations is like that we have a constant and then it's a function of its previous values yt minus 1 and we have error term remember in deterministic trend we had yt is a function of just a time here yt is a function of its past values yt minus 1 so yt can be found out from the previous value of um, the same time series now the previous value of same time series is not something that is known to us unlike in the first case in the deterministic case where we know for sure what the value of t is going to be okay and that's why it is called stochastic because it is so uncertain okay. as long as the phi the slope parameters so in the in the deterministic case we had this beta right something similar here okay we have used um, this uh, phi operator okay if phi the modulus of phi is less than one then it is stationary and we have no issue with that you know we can simply go ahead with uh, you know forecasting the future values and everything is fine but there could be cases where the the modulus of phi could be the one or modulus of phi is greater than one now our topic will, I mean this particular session will be more concerned about the cases where we have phi equal to 1. So how do we deal with such case? How do we define this and what exactly is the situation when you have the modulus of phi is, is 1. Okay, And that's very interesting um, aspect of a stochastic strain which is not that straightforward. It's not stationary, it is it's a non-stationary case and it's a case that is of interest to many people because in the real world many situations are cases where we have a phi the modulus of phi equal to one in fact this is some form of random work that we'll be talking about and we'll see in the next few slides you know what what the forms are all right so when takes phi takes a value of one the series becomes yt equal to constant and then you have yt minus one so phi takes a value of one so there is no coefficient and then you have the error term right so if you in, think intuitively so uh, let's say you know, 
example of stock price. Stock price of tomorrow is just the stock price of yesterday plus some constant. Okay, and then you have error term. Right. Such a series is very difficult to forecast. This is a typical case of non-stationary series uh, and we'll talk more about it. Okay. So here is this stochastic print where the phi takes a value of 1. So the first series is yt equal to c plus yt minus 1 plus at. Similarly, you can write y, let's say yt minus 1 equal to c plus yt minus 2 plus at minus 1. And you put that in this equation. So in place of yt minus 1, we just put this particular equation. And that's what we have done here. c plus this particular thing I've just taken from here. And then you have the error term. Okay. And you keep doing that for yt minus 2. You can also write that in terms of yt minus 3. And you keep doing that. And ultimately, you will reach a point where you will have y0. Okay. And you have t times the constant. And you have summation of the error terms, which eventually, you know, gets to. Uh, so why do we really want phi to be uh, less than 1 for, you know, stationarity and so on? So what happens when phi is less than 1 is that when you plot the time series, it is going to be mean reverting. That means it's the time series will come back towards mean every time it goes up. If it goes up, it will certainly come towards here and then it goes up and comes towards. So it will be somewhere near that mean. Okay. So the mean will be constant and moreover the variance will also likely to be very, uh, you know, constant or near constant. Okay. So that's. Uh, one of the property of phi being minus one here. Okay, you can actually mathematically prove that the series is converging uh, if uh, phi takes a value of uh, you know less than one. Otherwise, it's, it it is not going to converge. All right. So this is a typical case of a random walk model. Okay, so y t equal to y t minus one plus the error term a t. So this particular thing is, is a typical case of random work, okay? And if we include the, the constant part, then it is dripped, okay? That means the series has started not just from zero origin, it started somewhere here or somewhere here, 